greetings. Um, Otis, this is gonna go awfully with the dogs. Excuse me, excuse me, Otis, if you just get down. This is Baby Dill's moment. <gasps> Different vibe today. We're sat down with a fire and a hot chocolate because I just haven't had chance to film a <sighs> quiet on set, please, boys. Quiet, we're filming. Um, I haven't had a chance to film anything like horsey and active for you. I've had quite a week. Boys! This is like retro story time YouTubers. Do you remember that? I don't know if people still do it, but we're doing it today. Story time. So basically I took the dogs for a walk on Tuesday. And I was like, oh, I'll just get a quick dog walk in before it gets too dark. What could possibly go wrong? I'll tell you what went wrong. Baby Dill vanished towards the end of the walk. I was coming back to the house and there was no sign of him. And he does this all the time. Like he'll just smell a rabbit or a rat and he'll just be off. And I always think, well, have a nice time, but you know, I'll be waiting for you at home. And he always turns up within an hour. He'll come and just he taps on the door. And he's like, I'm here, mummy. I let him in. So that's kind of our routine. And he vanished as normal didn't come home an hour later I thought we'll give him the benefit of the doubt like he's always come home this far and he's he's nearly nine so you know I've got a lot of data there that would tell me he's gonna come home and he'll be fine and it's getting later and later it's like seven o'clock and he wasn't back and I thought something is seriously wrong like my boy would be back if he could be back he's obviously lost or injured or he's stuck so I went out and I found this enormous badger set really close to where we were walking. And I just, I knew, I mean, he loves to go down holes, digging. He's a Jack, well, he's half Jack Russell. And I just knew, I was like, he is down there. So I was screaming down all of these holes, trying to get him to come out. And I was like, baby Dill, baby Dill, obviously very loud. Um, and I was still, still being hopeful. I was like, he may not be down there. Maybe he's just, He's on a chase, he's got something, and you know, he's having a really good time. But I also sort of knew that he should have been home by now. It was also traumatic, I'm trying to remember how everything went. I went back in the house for a couple of hours, and it was like nine, half past nine at night, and I thought, one last try, I'm gonna go out and make sure that he's not stuck anywhere and I can't see him. And also, with it being so late, there were no noises. So if he had been under the ground barking, I would have been able to hear him. So I thought, so I went out screaming him. I searched every, like I walked so far that day with torches and it was just so, so sad. And I just felt hopeless. And I had to give up because I'd walked everywhere that I could and had no sign of him. So I thought, right, I'll leave the back door open overnight. I'll put his bed in the kitchen with some food and some water. And I'm sure that he's a clever enough dog, he's going to get himself home. So I went to bed, didn't really sleep that well, because I was just crying. And about three o'clock in the morning, I woke up and I was like, oh, baby Dill. And I ran downstairs expecting to see him in his bed. And he wasn't. <laughs> oh, it, that was a horrible feeling, because I was so convinced that he was going to come home. And he hadn't. So I went back up to bed. But couldn't really get back to sleep because my son is missing and then in the morning I did drift off for a couple of hours at about five o'clock and I woke up in the morning and as soon as it was light I was out there with a spade digging the entrances to these badger holes and I know you're not supposed to like I know you aren't supposed to disrupt a badger set because they're protected but also badger my dog like I know which one's going to win. It's going to be my dog every time. And I'm an animal lover. Like, I love all animals. But when it comes to my dog or a wild animal, there's really no contest. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. So I was digging out all of these holes. And it took forever. And these holes are so deep. And I kind of realised that I wasn't... Apart, all I did was dig out the entrances. But apart from that, I couldn't really do much more. Because it was just so vast. So at least I dug out the entrances and I could sort of see into the holes a bit better. So if he'd have been close to the entrance, I would have seen a tail or something. And I was shouting down, 
nothing, not, not a sound, no response back. And then at half past 12, one o'clock, so we're nearly getting to 24 hours he's been missing. I had a search party come over, I put everything on Facebook, like my dog's missing, because I didn't know if someone had him in their house, or I didn't know what had happened. And obviously I'd rung the vets, and the vets didn't have him. And it was all just pointing to the fact that he was probably stuck down a hole. So there were about 10 people all searching this area, shouting for him, looking everywhere. There were two friends of mine went walking up this massive hill for hours looking for him, asking anybody if they'd seen him. I was going door to door of all the local houses. Everyone, everyone in the area knew about it. And then I sort of came back and it would have been maybe three, it was about 24 hours since he'd gone missing, so three, half three, starting to get dark. And I just felt so desperate because at least in the morning, I had hope. I had a plan that we were gonna have a search party. I was gonna take a spade out. I was gonna go door to door. I was gonna ring the vets. I had all of these things that I could do. And then when none of those had worked, I was like, Pfft. well, that's it. I'm all, out. I'm all out of options. What am I supposed to do? I was absolutely in despair as to what to do because he is like my baby like me and this boy have been through so much together like he's dogs are your best friends aren't they they are your family and he really is my family he's got me through some really difficult times and I just couldn't bear to think of him stuck somewhere and I was just hoping that he had chased a rabbit and he'd ended up on the road and someone had taken him into their house but when he wasn't turning up at any vets or any rescue places that was looking more and more unlikely and everything was pointing to the fact that he was stuck in this badger set so I spoke to the fire brigade so that they could go and put cameras down the holes and just check he was in there and then dig him out but because it was a badger set I had to get a permit from the RSPCA so the RSPCA were going to come out. I was speaking to our local hunt to see if we'd get a terrierman to come out. I mean, the local hunt doesn't have a terrierman anymore, but I thought they might know of someone that could send their dog down. I was looking at UK sniffer dogs to see if they could get some sniffer dogs out to find him. And I just read online, I was like looking at other people who'd been in a similar situation. And there was a story about a dog that had been in a hole for two or three days, and it came out after the owners had put a chicken sandwich at the entrance. So I thought, I was skeptical, I really didn't think it would work, but also I had to try something. So I cooked all these sausages, and I'm a vegan, I don't, I wouldn't touch meat for like my favorite person in the world, but for my dog, I touched sausages with my bare hands and just threw them in the oven. And I was like, I've got to cook sausages for my dill. Like I've got to try everything. So I put these sausages at the entrances to the holes and I went back like 15 minutes later because I thought I should hear him. If he's stirring, I'll hear him. Nothing. So I went back in the house and I was just so, I'd given up. I was like, I've, I've done everything I can. Apart from waiting for the RSPCA and the fire brigade, there's not much more I can do. And I had a phone call from the RSPCA woman and she said, I'm gonna be with you in about an hour. And I was like, yeah, okay, like as soon as you can, please. And then as I was just sat in the kitchen waiting, my friend came over to the house and I was like, ugh, what do you want? Like, now is not the time. I'm not in the mood to speak to anyone. And I opened the door and she just had baby Dill in her arms and she was cradling him like a baby. And I just burst into tears and grabbed him and it was just so beautiful to be reunited. He must have been stuck in a badger hole because he was filthy, so filthy. He was really hungry and he just felt like skinny and weak. And it don't, I mean, it's only been 27, 28 hours, but he just didn't look great. But not a scratch on him, nothing. And that's what I was worried about. I was worried 
that a badger would have attacked him or even killed him was what I was worried about. Not a scratch. Apart from an enormous tick on his eyelid, he was absolutely fine. So I took him upstairs, gave him a bubble bath, set him down in front of the fire with a blanket, and the two of us literally just slept in front of the fire. It's me just cuddling him, and oh, it was so emotional. Like, what a start to the year. To be completely just distraught and then to be so so happy that my baby boy had come home and I'm just so lucky to have so many people that adore him that they came out fighting and they all came out looking for him and it turned out he sort of came home by himself anyway but what, what an adventure but what I would say it's good to be prepared for these situations because I had no idea what you're supposed to do if your dog goes down a hole. I didn't know that you could call the fire brigade and that badger sets are protected or whatever. Um, I didn't know that you could get sniffer dogs or I didn't know any of this. It's all what I've learned over the last 24 hours he was missing. I did so much research and a couple of, a couple of tips I've got if you ever find yourself in the same situation, definitely cook food that, <laughs> food, definitely cook something that they'll really like smell, something really potent, which why I thought sausages or bacon, and put that at the entrance of the hole because I don't, I can't say if that's what did it, but it's just a bit of a coincidence and it doesn't hurt to try it when you've exhausted everything else. So cook some food, put it at the entrance to the hole. Also, one thing that I learned when I was looking for the sniffer dogs to come out was if you live in a, in a household that has more than one dog you need to be able to give them an item that will only smell of the dog that's missing and that's what I was really struggling with because Dill and Otis they share everything so I didn't have a blanket or a bowl or a bed anything that would have just smelled like Dill is both of them so going forwards I'm going to make sure that I always have something that just smells of each dog and doesn't get contaminated. Let's hope it doesn't happen again my little boy, I think that's enough adventures for one lifetime. Absolutely blooming heartbreaking. It was so, so awful. I haven't been that stressed and that upset ever. I mean, that will be up there with like, that will definitely be up there with most traumatic of 2020s. I don't think I'll top that one. Um, I shouldn't say things like that. Can we please not run away again, Dill, and get stuck down a hole? The next day, we both just slept and ate because we hadn't done any of that the day before. You just realise, I mean, obviously I love my dogs, but when something like that happens, you just, you realise how much they mean to you and I was thinking of all the things that Dylan's been there for and there's been some pretty rookie moments that I don't think I would have been able to get through without him and he is, he's like, he is my family and he's just, mm. and as well I was feeling guilty because since I've had Otis, obviously he's a puppy, he needs time and attention and Dylan probably has been taking a little bit of a back seat. I've tried my best not to, but it just happens, doesn't it? And for the last few days, Otis has barely had a look in. It's been all about baby Dill. So I think the scales have balanced out again. So that's my story time. Horsey wise, I've been hunting today. It was freezing, let me tell you. I had my thickest thermals on and I was still frozen. So I came back, I had a shower, washed my hair. Thank you, it's looking shiny. And I just thought I don't want to go outside again. So we're having a cozy night in front of the fire. I've been re-watching 90210 from ages ago because it's on Amazon Prime. So we're gonna watch another episode of 90210. I mean, it's not even any good, but it's nostalgic. I mean, I used to watch that when I was 15, 14, 15, 16, and I loved it then, so 
just looking at it now and thinking, wow, I really thought this was good, I was stupid. It's quite fun. I need to go out and do the horses for their final nighttime check. Yeah, horsey wise, we could do, let's do a quick little update. So McAllister is still going hunting once a week and he is doing so good. He's not stopped at anything for the last few times. He's just a machine, he loves it. He did pull a shoe off today though, so that cut the day short. Are you tired, my little baby? <laughs> he lost a French shoe. Billy and Mr. Jones are on their holidays. I thought, they've just been working quite hard this year and I did want to give them a holiday and I was gonna do it at the end of the winter. But the weather was so nice between Christmas and New Year. It was like bone dry and quite warm. So I just chucked them all out in the field and they lived out for a few days. They did come back in last night and tonight they're in because it's been wet and really cold. Well, it's not so much the cold, it's just been really, really wet. But I think it's gonna be dry again. Not tomorrow, but the day after. And then it's gonna be dry. This is on the forecast, so it might change. It'll be dry for a couple of weeks. So they can go back out and continue their holiday. I don't know how long I'm going to give them off. Billy can probably have a month because he deserves it. Mr. Jones can have at least a week or two and then we'll crack on again. I still need to think of a show name for him to get him registered with the BS. But I just, it's been stressful. I've had a lot of things going on. Like you get Christmas out the way, New Year comes round and you're feeling all positive and fresh and ready to take on the world. And then your little baby boy get stuck in a hole. Hmm? It was so sad. 27 hours down a badger hole and he still looks like a rock star. Oh my goodness. Look how big he's gotten. I mean, you can't really see, but he's a monster. Ah. It's really quite sweet because as big as Otis is, Dylan only has to growl at him and he won't do anything. Like My neighbour brought some spaghetti bolognese round for them and <laughs> I put it down on the floor, sorry Dill, I put it down on the floor and I thought I hope Otis doesn't just fall for all of this before Dill can get a chance to eat it. And Otis stuck his nose in, started wolfing it down and Dylan came over and just growled and then Otis just sat down and watched Baby Dill eat the rest of it. So. It's definitely Baby Dill is in charge. And this enormous whopper of a dog. I think, I think I might have got the breed wrong. I think he's a Great Dane, not a German pointer. He's enormous. Like, can you see? The size of this dog. It's horrific. And yes, they both slept in the bed last night. And I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say it. It's so nice. My beautiful boys. Right, that's it. We're gonna go. Hopefully the next video will be a bit more um, interesting for you. But this might save a life, so don't discount it.